What's up guys, I got a brand new video for you today and today we're gonna to take a look at Adobe's new version of Photoshop beta. Now, I made a video a year ago going over generative fill in the original beta when they had that come out and uh, it was pretty decent. Um, there's a lot of things that need to be fixed and I've actually been using generative fill because it's now out full version in the regular Photoshop, not the beta, and I use it all the time but uh, I don't use a lot of the AI stuff, so I wanna kinda jump into that here and see what they've added because there's a lot of improvements and a lot of new things they've added, so uh, I'll shut up and let's take a look at it. All right, so the first thing I wanna look at, the first feature is reference image, and this is something new they've added. Basically before when you were doing generative fill, you would type in your prompts and it would try and spit out something based off that prompt. But now you can actually give it a reference image, so something that's similar to what you actually want it to look like and it'll try and match up something similar. So right now we have her black hat, but what if we wanted to change the hat to something like a cowboy hat? So we're gonna go to the selection tool here, the lasso, and I'm just gonna draw out around this hat. And I don't know what it's gonna do with the hands, but we'll see what happens here. So now when we go to generative fill, we have this option right here. I'm gonna actually pull this down because it's kind of in the way. And this is where you go and choose your reference image. So I have a few cowboy hats here, let's try this brown one just for the heck of it. And now I can say uh, cowboy hat. And now it's gonna go and pull from that reference image and try and give you something similar. It's thinking, it's doing its thing, it's generating. I have low expectations, but <laughs> I mean, that's not too bad. Uh, it doesn't really look quite like the cowboy hat I had in mind. Um, I'm gonna show you here what I actually had. This is the hat that I have as a reference image, so it's pulling some browns and stuff. I'm actually impressed with the texture there. We've got some leather texture, but that's our first option. We still have three more options here we can choose from, or we can generate more. Not great. That one's a little bit better, but I almost feel like the hat's too small, like the brim needs to be bigger. But you know, that's not too bad. We're gonna zoom in here. I'm actually pretty impressed with the texture. Now, obviously the image was shot on something that was 40 megapixels. This was shot on the X-T5. So the quality is gonna be less than the actual image, but the cool thing is they have a new option here and it's enhancing the detail on that generated image. So we're gonna click on this. This is a new feature that we didn't have before and it's gonna tighten up things and sharpen things and add more texture. And uh, that looks pretty dang good. I actually like how it, the focus is falling off back here. It knows the focal plane is right here in the front of the face and it's falling off to the background. Did a good job at tucking it in under the hair. And uh, I mean, the original hat is obviously better. This looks a little bit too small, but it did a good job with the hand and the wrist. I didn't actually even pay attention to that. Everyone's doing their tests with a backpack because that's obviously the easiest. But what if we wanted to do something with sunglasses? So I have this image here. This is from the, the most recent video I came out with on the Sony 16 to 25. But what if we want to replace Beck sunglasses? So I'm going to actually draw around these sunglasses here. Now in the old gender of fill, you could just type in white sunglasses, aviators, and it would generate something pretty good. But now we can actually generate something that's a little bit closer to an actual sunglasses style that you'd want to use. And let's try these white sunglasses. So I'll just type in the like, Gucci white sunglasses and see what it does on this one. Again, going in with low expectations. Let's see what we get. Those are pretty decent. Again, it messed up the nose, the nostrils missing. Those aren't too bad. The reflections are good. The nose is still messed up though. Um, it did put shadows in behind here this time, but it still kind of messed up the face. And again, if we want to go in here and generate the deep, or enhance the detail, we can enhance the generated detail. Oh, it says this variation is too small to enhance. Well, technically we don't need to enhance it because if you're that far away, you're never going to really see how much detail there is, but that's actually pretty impressive. If we're looking at it from this distance and we're not zoomed in super close, that looks pretty good. I would definitely need to fix that nostril though, because that's kind of messed up, but Overall, it, it did pull from our reference image. Again, our reference image was these white sunglasses and it pumped out something pretty similar. It doesn't say Gucci on the side, but I have a feeling there's reasons for that and Adobe probably will never allow it to say Gucci. Now, the next new thing I wanna look at that they've improved is remove background. So we can actually click remove background now. It's gonna analyze the image, 
find the person or the object or subject, cut them out of the background, and then you can actually generate a background now right after doing that. So we're gonna go remove background, does it super quick, it's gonna cut around the hair and everything like that. Didn't really do the best job in my opinion, I've seen it do better, but uh, well, we're just gonna roll with this. So this is a beta still, we gotta, gotta just go with the fact that it's a beta still. So generate background. So now you can actually give it a prompt on what type of background you want. So let's do something like, I don't know, Nevada, desert, mountains, red rocks. Let's try that. Now it's gonna analyze the image and it's gonna try and match up the way the lighting's coming in and stuff like that. So let's see how well it does. Um, I've tried this on other images and it worked out pretty good. I didn't try it on this image specifically, um, but that's pretty decent. That's not red rocks though but that does look pretty cool. And the light is coming from the right direction and they even have bokeh and out of focus. Now I would say that it's a little bit too bright. I'd probably darken it. So the cool thing is we can come into our adjustments here and I could just pull the uh, brightness down, maybe bump the contrast up a little bit. And then I could come in here with the, the color and adjust that because I feel like it's a little bit too green. You could warm that up a bit. So I wanna try a uh, background replacement on this image. Obviously we have some shipping containers. This was on my Sony 16 to 35 G Master Mark II review. So this was some images from that shoot. But we're gonna remove the background here. So we're gonna click on remove background. And I know we tried it on that last image where we were in like a nature scene, but what if we wanted to do like a city type vibes? So uh, let's go generate background. Let's try, uh, let's try New York City alley or something like that, moody. Apparently I can't spell moody. Moody. Let's see if that's enough prompts to generate something close to what would look good with this image. Again, it's gonna try and analyze where the light's coming in on the face and try and match that up with the background. And it usually does a pretty decent job. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see what it does here. So that's pretty decent. Um, it's not necessarily the same type of lighting. There isn't any sun coming in. That one's pretty decent. That one's also pretty decent. I feel like if we adjust some of the colors and lighting, it would do a pretty good job. It actually did a decent job of the hair cutout this time. Um, it's not perfect, but it's definitely a lot better. And you saw how quick that was to generate something like that. So it's pretty cool if you wanna do like complete background replacements, it's so easy now compared to before. So there's one thing I wanna try here and they've added Firefly 3, which is basically your AI generation image tool where you can literally generate an image based off your prompts. Um, the current version of Photoshop is using like Firefly 1, I think, or something like that. Um, but now we're at Firefly 3, so I don't know where 2 went to, but I could be wrong. So we're gonna generate an entire image based off of prompts. Um, I'm gonna to go to new, I'm gonna create a new image here. That's super high resolution, but whatever. So down here we have import image or generate image. We're gonna to go to generate image and you're gonna get this whole generation thing here where you can basically select the type of thing you wanna make. You wanna make it art, you wanna make it a photo. Um, you can remix some images here and you can even have a reference image, which is pretty cool. But I have a prompt here, which is kind of like a Gucci ad. I pre-wrote it out here just cause I've used this before on other AI generation tools. So we got model wearing sunglasses, a portrait, Gucci poster, fashion photography, dramatic portrait of a man wearing a green suit, Gucci clothes sitting in a Victorian chair, color photography, 1975 film grain. Now you can add as many prompts as you want, um, but we're gonna go to photo here. And I could give it a reference image. I don't have too many options here, but let's try this one. This is kind of like a Gucci image. It's not gonna look exactly the same, but it's gonna try and pull from it. Gets it closer to what you actually want. So we're gonna generate this. I typically don't use full on AI generation stuff. I'd rather take the photo myself, but uh, it's getting pretty wild. We're gonna, photographers are gonna be out of a job soon. <laughs> That's actually pretty dang good. That doesn't look very Gucci. The hands are all messed up. Now I've worked with Mid Journey and it's gotten so much better. This looks like Mid Journey when it was like version one. I mean, they've got the background down. The background's looking pretty cool. I don't know if I'm really loving how massive these guys' feet look, and that's not a Gucci suit. A Gucci suit, uh, my reference image that I gave it, I didn't actually show you here. The reference image I gave it was something like this. So it's kind of going similar tones, color tones are the same, kind of those warm beige vibes. 
Um, but it's really not giving that Gucci suit. The Gucci suit would have like flowers and stuff on it. But I mean, it's doing a decent job. Actually, let's look here. Do we have film grain? So it did add some grain, some noise, kind of makes it look a little vintage. Um, but AI is still horrible at feet and teeth and hands. Now the hands aren't as bad as that last one I looked at, but uh, I mean, that's pretty decent. Something off about this guy's head. It's a little bit way too small for his body. Um, we could try and generate more. So I could come in here and say, uh, when I'm saying wearing a suit, I could say floral suit, cause that's kind of Gucci's thing. I'm gonna say, uh, I'm just gonna say a floral suit and see what happens. We're gonna generate a new option here. That's much better. That's more like a Gucci suit. Yes, that's way better. Oh, they got like a random piano. Hands are weird though. Hands are still kind of messed up. That would be sick if the guy's face didn't look like that. He's got a weird expression on his face, but much better than our last option. This looks more Gucci. That actually looks pretty decent. Now, if we zoom in here on the hands, they're obviously all messed up. <laughs> the hands look like they went through, uh, they've been dipped in radiation or something, but um, I just thought I'd show you because they've updated Firefly. All right, so I got one last image here I wanna take a look at, and I wanna talk about the new adjustment brush tool. Now they already had the adjustment brush tool before, but now you have it integrated with the AI stuff and you have way more adjustments you can make. So we'll go up here. Now you can see we've got all the adjustments in here before we didn't have all of these options. So if we wanted to go to brightness, say we wanted to brighten up his face a little bit, um, it'll actually apply to the object now. So if you click on apply object, it'll actually let you select what area you want to actually change which is pretty cool because maybe I only want to adjust the grass and change the color of it, or only want to adjust the sky and change the color of it, or the person. We're gonna go back to the adjustment brush tool here and we're only gonna stay on his skin. So we wanna brighten up the skin a little bit. As you can see, I can paint that in here. And the cool thing is I didn't have to mask that, it automatically did it for me. Now we can adjust the uh, intensity on that if we wanted to and dial that back just by changing the opacity here. But just thought I'd bring it up because it's kind of a new option, a new feature. Again, applying it to the object is really cool. I think it would work better, may, maybe not on humans, on like random objects. There are a couple more new features they added to the beta, but these are the main ones I just wanted to go over. Now I'm seeing this image. I'm wondering if we can do some of that reference image replace and see if we could put like a full suit on them and see if that changes things. I know we've already played with the reference image a lot, but it's one of the coolest things that they've added. Um, I'm just gonna select his entire body here and see if it can replace this with a suit. Oh, I just did a horrible outline there. <laughs> but let's see what we can do here. During the fill, we're gonna add a reference image. I'm gonna go for this kind of orange floral suit here. We've got a Gucci theme going on here. So let's do, uh... you know what? I'm not even gonna put any prompts in. Let's just see what happens when it generates it based off the reference image. I got low expectations like always. I want it to blow my mind. <laughs> Ugh, where did this hand come from? And why is it white? All right, let's see what other options we have here. See, that's what it's supposed to look like. Why does it keep thinking that that's his far right arm when it's actually his closest arm? But that actually looks pretty decent. Um, not a huge fan of the shape, kind of sketchy. Anyway, I think that's going to be it for this video. Um, thanks for watching. That is the new beta for Photoshop. It's got still a long way to go, but it's nice to see all these tools are adding to it. And uh, yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. I'll see you guys in the next one.